and um, she is a deputy director working in health um, intelligence. Dr. Sadi Karim, who is the head of services. Dr. Mr. Glenn Karik, who is the head of um, finance. Mr. Simon Kay, and the rest of the members. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Desiree Mohani, um, budget management. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, HRD. Uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we will ask the minister to give a brief uh, overview on the budget of the department. Minister, over to you, and thank you very much for attending. Um, thank you very much, Chair. I will put up my uh, camera now, and then after the HOD they presented, I won't be able to put up the camera about to have a uh, load shedding. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity and also for the considerations to give this virtually. Uh, at this time of the year, things are getting hectic. I know that the team, they probably already there. We are having a, an, an engagement uh, today with the private sector. And also it's, it's all about uh, what we're presenting now in regard to the, the challenges in regard to the budget and also financial constraints on all. So we'll have some other engagements further with the organized labor. And they, actually, it's a second or third round with most of the stakeholders. As you always say, that health is a steward. Uh, Chair, the health system has always been, has been subjected to many crises, as everyone is aware. If it's not about the droughts, uh, the floods, the load shedding, the pandemic, the burden of disease, uh, but despite that, we find that we try to be able to maneuver and see how we can rob Paul and pay Pauline under the limited um, uh, the resources. Minister, when uh, on um, in the last week when she presented the appropriation, uh, she mentioned something like, as I quote, the failings of the national budget process mean that we are not budgeting for three years. Well, even, we are not even budgeting for one year anymore, but we are working on pay-as-you-go budgeting. This is exactly what is happening. And unfortunately, health as a safety net uh, for every sector, you find that we get affected mostly. So Chair, as we deliberate the, the budget, um, which is about 29.7 billion, uh, one may say that it is an increase I think for 930 something, it was the last, um, at the beginning of the year, uh, I appropriated about 28.8 billion. So you need that to need consideration that, although it might seem like big, but it, actually it's not. You must look at it. Uh, uh, don't get deceived in regard to what does it mean. And uh, we spoke about the fiscal cliff. We're actually in that fiscal cliff as actually we have heard from the National uh, Minister of Finance uh, when he presented the medium budget policy statement. Um, and we have seen, uh, Dr. Clinton can even uh, probably indicate, the health sector is underfunded. And the very first time, actually, that we have got this health sector to be so much uh, underfunded. You recall, Chair, at the beginning of the year, we spoke about a baseline shortfall of about 1.5 billion so whilst the provincial treasurer tried um, to help us somehow, but for the first time, we never had money that needs to be cushioning us specific for service pressure. Specifically, as you know, that we are now uh, going to the festive season, we are very much away in terms of the pressures that we normally uh, get at our ECs, not only from trauma, accidents, drowning, but even from also medical emergencies uh, related, for example, the... Uh, um, str str strokes and so forth. Um, so this um, then came the unfunded unfunded wage bill chair, uh, which meant that with the three years that was signed at the national level at the bargaining council uh, for for the for the health workers. Noting we are not saying that the health workers or oh, the public servants public servants they don't deserve an increase, but unfortunately money didn't follow the province. So I also welcome the 78% of the uh, rescue, it's not even a rescue, uh, of, the survey, of funding uh, that wage bill. You can hear 78%. And can you imagine that it means that not all the uh, personnel in our health departments uh, will be able to fund it. So it means that the money has to come from us. 
And in addition to that share, it means that we won't be able to fill as much needed posts because we have to service uh, the other 20%. Uh, whilst we are grateful for this, but uh, we still feel strongly for me that the national has to add uh, additional funding. Taking consideration what I said in relation to the crisis related to the, um, to the currently, for example, with the load sharing that we have to endure so, uh, Chair, our department has begun the discussions uh, internally with the colleagues, like I've made an example of that, who are engaging with the private sector. Yesterday, we're engaging with the universities in regard to that way, how they can, uh, because it's no longer about the role in Poland paying Pauline. It's about robbing both Paul. <laughs> because Pauline uh, won't be able to get much because uh, Paul is in the dispute. So, it is, the Chair, that it's a double edged sword even though it is non-negotiable to implement cost-cutting interventions to ensure departments' liquidity, we are placing further strain on a system that is already pressured with healthcare workers who are exhausted. So as we navigate, Chair, please, we are asking for uh, you and the members of this House and everyone else to be kind to us as health, because we are trying as much as we can. It is frustrating. Uh, because it does, it does and will uh, impact on the moral injury when we have to prioritize one patient over the other, or when we have to reduce the theater times uh, when we're supposed to have three, but we have to do two. And also when we have as many, especially the green patients, the, uh, the yellow patients specifically, who might have to wait longer in our services when they're already waiting longer. Mama, ooh, 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 MP, um, MPP ratio, uh, then for her normally asked, why are the patients sleeping on the floor? Um, probably now she'll understand it far much better that if you think that that was bad, it's worse. But as long that we make sure that uh, the person does get a high level quality care in as much as that the conditions are not as good. So, Chair, I hereby appropriate um, a, a budget of a 29.735988 billion from the 28.80565 billion, an increase of the 931.423 over to Dr. Kuti and the team. Thank you very much. I won't be able to put on the thingy, um, the camera, because I'll be on the road for the appropriation and also for the aids. Uh, day. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, for that contribution. Travel well. Dr. Kluti? Um, good morning, sir, and good morning to the, the colleagues, um, sorry, to the members um, of this committee, and also to my colleagues. Thank you, Minister, for the introduction. Um, Chairperson, the appropriation in front of you, as the Minister has indicated, is for the amount of 931,423,000 uh, uh, addition to our budget, our baseline budget. Um, as the Minister has indicated, um, it's, that is a net um, amount that has come into our system. The biggest have come in via the adjustment to the equitable share, um, and it came from an adjustment from the National Treasury for partial coverage of the wage increase um, for healthcare workers. And this amount of money covers 78% of that cost. Some additional funding has been come from, uh, came from rollover money, which is money ourselves, that we've in previous years, and with um, revenue that we've generated, it's come into the system, and some additional money from the provincial fiscus. That makes up the total amount of money, and then the division um, is according, uh, accordingly split across all the areas, therefore, where we need to cover the financial costs incurred by the additional salaries given to people. That um, said, this amount of money comes against the backdrop, as the minister explained, of um, a downward trend that in all, um, and it will continue for the next three to five years um, as part of the allocation to the health sector generally in the country and for the health system in the Western Cape. Uh, so it's in line with that, that we have instituted quite strict measures in our department to be able to live within the envelope. 
um, we have gone on to explain that we have done as much as we possibly can and there is always still more to do in terms of financial pressures to be able to save money and to be more efficient. But we started to go into the arena of having to affect what kind of services we offer, where do we offer it and how do we offer it. Uh, so we are in a process of consultation with a range of stakeholders. We had an engagement with civil society. We had engaged with um, the uh, our university partners. We are having engagement today with the private sector. We will be having an engagement with organized labor next week. And this is a whole set of series because we are preparing for this amount of money takes us towards the end of this financial year, which is March. But we are preparing also then for the appropriation that will come in for the MTF allocation that will kick in from the 1st of April. And all our, all our planning and everything is now towards that. Um, so with um, those kind of comments, Chairperson, um, I'm just wanting to put on the table that the team of people on this call, we're doing everything that we can. We're doing forward planning for what we need to do for the next five years. We do forward planning for what we need to do in every one of the years leading up into that five years. We're engaging National Treasury, Provincial Treasury, the National Department of Health. We're engaging all other sectors in this province to working together with education, specifically education, social development, our colleagues in safety, and also our colleagues in mobility and um, agriculture and environmental affairs and development planning with municipalities and as I said, all the sake, uh, social partners. So we are really working and building partnerships with everyone to execute our responsibility, which is giving access to health care for the people of the Western Cape in the most responsible way while facing this budget reality. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Dr. Kutu, for that uh, detailed uh, information that you gave us. Thank you in advance, if I do forget at the end, for what you're doing across all spectrums uh, on behalf of health in this province uh, in terms of your engagements. Members, we will now deliberate on vote six, the health and wellness in the schedule of the Western Cape Adjustments Appropriation Bill, Bill B7, 2023. Uh, this bill is uh, now tabled uh, and members are welcome to make submissions uh, on the adjustments and appropriation budget and to ask questions. Can I get an indication of members who would like to get uh, to ask questions or make a contribution? If you were to raise your hands, I see member Wintvogel. In the absence of other hands at this stage, Member Wintvogel, please proceed. I see Member Vance as well. Member Wintvogel. Um, thank you, uh, Chairperson. And once again, good morning to everyone. And I really welcome the input uh, of the Minister. I miss uh, part of the HOD's input. But um, let me also thank the HOD and his team for the hard work. Um, I, 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 I want to start here on, on, on page 99. And we, we, uh, we, we noted and welcomed the increase in the budget, uh, especially the allocation from the national government. And, 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 and I know it's not enough, but I want to use the minister's word normally to say we must deal with what we have. And, 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 and that's the only thing that we can do at the moment. But I want to understand from the HOD, uh, how will the increase be used to fulfill the aim to provide uh, equitable access to quality health care? My my main interest is is how will this budget alleviate service pressure and patient sleepings on the floor at our hospitals? I think the minister mentioned. So I hope I I I I I will understand. Uh, but 
I also want to understand the stand of the department after the public hearings, give, um, uh, given that people resoundly supported the NHI bill in the province, uh, but was rejected by the new liberal DA-led uh, government. But it does not come as a surprise, especially when it comes to our poor people, because for them it's profit before people. And I want to understand how the budget will be used to address some of the concern raised by the people on the ground. Then secondly, Chair, on also on page uh, 99, change to program purpose, objectives and, and major measures. Do these changes include a health net service with assisted patients who for um, medical reason could not use public transport to attend health facilities uh, in the rural area? Yes, I have received complaints from LD who are crying that um, program has been stopped and this will affect them negative, in a negative way. Can you get clarity on this? Uh, why is the department not ending such program and how will patients be assessed? I know in a previous meeting, I think the HOD or the minister mentioned about the Tiali, the Tiali ICU project, uh, but how... If because my understanding they 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 will launch it somewhere in Jorts, how will the other rural areas benefit? Uh, because I know they are also making use of of, of that. Um, then, chair. Lastly, on 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 page one or two, sub program two point two community health clinics. I, I want to understand from the department. Uh, can the city now order its own? Medicine, and if so, why is the 11 million sifted to fund the cost of medicine order on behalf of the city? Um, and on page 103, there are funds sifted to fund new posts. What is the number and details of these posts, and in which facility will they be stationed? I will park there for now. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Member Wintvogel. Member Barnes. Member Barnes. Um, thank you, Chairperson, and good morning once again to you. I'm on page 99, Chair. Let me start off where Member Van Vogel left under Table 6.1, Health Facilities Management. Chair, the 136 million in the infrastructure budget is regrettable. I understand this is uh, has attributed to delays, pro to delays in projects. What I want to know, Chair, is if this committee can be furnished with a list of projects and their, pro and their reports on how far they are progress reports and any reasons for these delays. Chair, also I would want to know what is the status of the rebuilding of the GF Chester Hospital and what tasks have been accomplished this year? How much of that 136 million reduction for the GF Chester uh, was, was, was allocated for? And then Chair, at the same time, I have a question on page 104 uh, under Central Hospital Service. Chair, what caused these delays and what are these de devices and equipment used for? I see the funds are now shifted to, to fund removal and replacement of computer software. Why was this not budgeted for in the main budget? On page 105, the department talks about recent vacancies that are not filled due to difficulty of finding suitable candidates. What is the number and detail of this post and which care skills needed for them? What work is being found? Uh, what work is being found uh, uh, with these skills? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Member Barnes. Uh, Dr. Clutie. Um, can I just say, uh, uh, respond to it uh, before? Mm, before uh, my, apologies, uh, my apologies, Minister. My apologies, uh, Minister. Okay. Uh, before Dr. Truti uh, 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 responds to the specifics, but I think the, the, the message, general message that we're bringing, uh, first of all, this is the, the budget now, the date is 30th November, which is the appropriation, which is it's the in year which is, is the money for still this year um, until 31st of March. 
Secondly, the message that is there, it's about how is in trouble, not only in the Western Cape, everywhere. I've just indicated how the health sector has been robbed in terms of the allocation, national allocation. And then secondly, as I said it in the beginning of the year for this budget year, uh, in year, it was about Western Cape and Gauteng has been the one that has been severely affected in regard to the formula that now is applied in regard to the equitable uh, budgeting, of which is in principle, no one can uh, be against that. However, it comes at a time, like now we have seen the census that show that uh, not only were the populous province, but if you look in terms of the different uh, municipalities, and also different population, like we've got the bulge in the 19 to the 35 year olds. And those ones, they are not even at university, they are not in training, they are not in employment. And then we've seen in regard to the, uh, whilst we have got a better um, employment, uh, a low unemployment, but you will get, uh, when you aggregate or you granulate in different components, we find that in the, in the most impoverished, you find that there's a child. The point that I'm trying to make is about uh, you, 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 you are you getting resources that get limited. Those are indicated 1.5 billion uh, that was cut. We're not even talking about the um, the um, uh, the inflation. So when the, the 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 province tried to assist us, it was not necessarily even to go to the baseline that we normally have. So even now, when I say the health sector is in trouble, with the conditional grants, which is they still for the next following year, they still have to work it out. They all have been cut. We are not in a normal situation. Myself and the HOD and the senior team is trying to make sure that we fly the airbus, whilst at the same time we have to fly it safely because we've got the passengers, which is uh, the patients and the staff who are the ones who are supposed to provide uh, beef or chicken. Because you don't want a situation during when we pass the tablets, we've got our staff falling off and then getting broken legs. So the issue is about that increase is mostly because of the wage bill that we are not part of, but we are not being funded fully. With the 34,000 staff members that we are supposed to be providing, uh, the, the, the increase. There's no additional from coming from, uh, uh, um, I mean, it's only about 78%. Therefore, it means that we still have to fund the other part just for the increase. And then it means that for the additional post there are costs, where we find that they have been, because we have been shortage as a population increase. It means that the people are getting sick, was not necessarily the only the population that is insured. It's mostly the uninsured, especially those are coming to the metro. It means that we will, we will end up not being able to fill some of the posts that are happening. Uh, Dr. Kluten, I, I, I also mentioned added that we have done internal conversations. The where we are saying that let's have the adults in the room so that to understand that you, the nephrology department, you, the radiology department, you, the ONG department, you, the, uh, um, uh, the, the Overberg district, health services, you, whatever, it means that what you have been planning to do and also what you are doing, it means that it can be compromised. If, if it means that if you have got 30 bed at a swollen in the hospital, if you have got a 30 bed swollen in hospital, uh, which is a dire need to have additional, but now we find that there's not going to be additional, it means that you still have to continue the 30 beds. Because if you continue, it means you are spreading thinly that one probably, probably professional nurse who has to look for all other patients. But at the extent that we can reduce the bed, that's a kind of where things are. We are not in the good space. In case we probably may seem as if we look like we, are, we got this, we got this in the sense that we have got staff that are understanding. It has never been in the health setting, including colleagues, Dr. 
I've been in the health space all my life, all my adult life. I've worked in health in different provinces. There's never been any other time that a health sector, even during the time of the COVID, at least with the COVID, we're focusing mostly on the COVID, uh, whilst the other illnesses, we say stay at home. But now everything is back. We've got more population. We have no money. The country has no money. The equitable share, uh, the conditional grants, and also in terms of uh, increasing the staff. We've got limited resources. That's a situation. So if you're talking about the patients that will be on the floor, wait for until uh, things get worse in regard to the supply is more, I mean, the demand is more than the supply. That's things, that's how things are across all the provinces, but I'm specifically talking about the Western Cape. Over to Dr. Kinti about the specifics. Thank you, Minister. Dr. Klute, do you wish to add? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, just on Member Ben Vogel's question, so the Minister explained, so the question that, Minister, that Member Ben Vogel asked, how does the increase lead to help to alleviate service pressures? This is not an increase. It is very clear that this is not an increase. Before the adjustment, we were projected to un overspend by 1.5 billion. This adjustment adds 900,000, 900 million into our budget, with the result that 400 to 500 million is still, we still projected to overspend more than what we got. So it's very important, as the minister said, this money that we're talking about here does not represent an increase to the budget. It's against that backdrop that we then have to say, okay, so the 900,000 comes on to offset a shortfall of 1.4 billion. Where do we put the 900,000? And the 900,000 is then to reduce the over expenditure across the department, but it still needs every place, even where you place the money, is projected to overspend money that we do not have. So I think it's very important to say that this is not additional money. It is money to offset partially the shortfall we have in the current budget for the current activities with the current pressures in our system. So the second issue is, so you ask what is the stand of the department on the NHI bill? The department has made its stand very clear. We've come to the standing committee, We've put output forward. We have submitted from the department side comments into the bill, and the department's position is very clear. Having made comments on what we believe the bill um, is, is trying to address, which is universal health coverage, we're very clear as a department that we support the concept of universal health coverage. Insofar as giving effect to what will come out of the bill, trying contracting units for primary care, we have probably the most active pilot in, um, in the garden route, and that is in Bito and Nysa, where we are working with our national counterparts to prototype, to test, to find workable solutions of how primary care can be provided between the public sector and the, and the private sector. In terms of health net, the explanation was given in our previous engagement with the committee. The health net discontinuation is in specific areas, and it being where we have seen that the, 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 the benefit of having the service for what we're offering and what we can offer in different ways, for instance, from Garden Root, has been explained by the tele-ICU, by other initiatives, so we are looking at innovative ways of taking services closer to where people are, that people do not have to spend up to 36 hours going to Cape Town for a 15-minute consultation. So we are looking at ways of making services more accessible, closer to people, and we're doing it for every geographic area in the province. In relation to the city and the question on page one or two, those are specifically medical medical um, um, 
medicines that we had to make and payment for for services that we have assumed responsibility for from the city. So we've spoken very clearly before to the committee about the 10 facilities that has come to us, and those are just correcting that medical um, medicine expenditure from what we're doing with that. In terms of post for Kailija Eastern, these were posts previously funded by NPOs in specific areas, um, and those are specific posts that has now been added to the Kailija Eastern post, specifically for, for posts previously funded by the NGOs that is no longer there. So it's not additional people, it's just we've created posts in our own Kailija Eastern office to be able to do the work that was previously done by people employed by NPOs. In terms of member bonds, this question, I'm going to ask um, Mr. K just to explain when it says in the appropriation that 136 million left our appropriation. You will explain where that 136 million under health facilities management went. It is not as if just it went somewhere. It, there's a key reason of why the 136 is debited against our budget but it is added to the Department of Infrastructure. So Mr. K will explain the 136 million. Then page of the, what, what uh, Member Barnes asked about um, Clifford Plain Regional Hospital. There has been progress. Um, we have got um, consultants appointed, so I'm going to ask Mr. K just to elaborate a little bit on what the progress has been with, um, with Clifford Plain Regional, potentially with Dr. Laura Angelette that we're just adding. The next work question about equipment 104 for Tigerberg. It is where we are dependent on very expensive pieces of equipment that must be imported. And invariably, there are delays with the types of equipment we're looking for. What has happened there is because of the delay, the money has been redirected into equipment and specifically computers because it is an essential part of upgrading. But again, a little bit of more detail can be explained by Mr. K and Dr. Angela to the twin. And then 105, again, the post that we can't find, this is in the built environment. This is being us being able to attract um, people with high risk skills, such as uh, engineers and in the built environment, not being able or willing to work for the salaries in the public sector. That specifically refers to that. So our uh, chairperson, with your permission, I'll ask Mr. K to proceed. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kluti, Mr. K. Uh, Dr. Kluti, I don't see Mr. K being online at the moment. Sorry, 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 Chair. My computer had a, oh. a, a moment there and I lost my, my cursor completely and I couldn't touch any buttons. So uh, my, my humblest apologies. Welcome. Um, Please proceed. Thank, thank you, Chair. So I think, uh, Member Barnes, the, the, your, your question about the list of infrastructure projects, can I refer you through to pages 129 through 134, 135, 139, 121, up to page 142, which gives uh, extensive detail of each and every project that we are undertaking um, uh, and, and as well as the expenditure and the reason and rationale that, 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 that you'll find there. To, to give the update on um, the GF um, the, the Department of Transport Public Works, who are our implementing agents, have been appointing a number of sub-consultants uh, so that we can get the design of the uh, building off the ground. And in fact, there are already some draft plans that are um, being circulated. On top of that, we've also set up a specific governance structure within the department that is looking at the Metro East and the Metro West service configurations to see um, how we will reconfigure our service platform uh, uh, to respond um, uh, to, to what is going to happen in the Clipfontaine, on the Clipfontaine site. Um, <clears throat> then I just thought you asked a specific question about the, the, um, the posts 
So the posts are for an, one audiologist, four dietitians, one social worker, and one auxiliary worker, and then Klipfontein, so that's the Kyalichi Eastern substructure, and the Klipfontein Mitchell's Plain, it's one audiologist. In Tigerberg Northern, it's four dietitians, and in Southern and Western, it's three dietitians. So that's just the, 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 the list. And then can I draw your attention, please, to page 99? So um, as, as both the Minister and Dr. Kluti have, have already alluded to, um, the, the, this is not an uh, additional allocation, so to speak. This is to fund a shortfall that was beyond our, um, our control, particularly when it came to the, 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 wage, the wage agreement. Um, and so internally, we've had to make some decisions. And some decisions have been made, you can see in health facilities management, a hundred million rands worth of projects have been stopped. And in the administration, we have shifted money that we budgeted for medical legal, and we have shifted that to fund the pressures in the, um, 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 in the service delivery programs. So you can see, we put 76 million rand into district health services, 11 million rand into provincial health services and 80 and a half million into uh, into the central hospitals to alleviate some of the pressure that exists within the goods and services space. Because as much as we talk about a shortfall in the in the compensation, the reality is that we got sub inflator increases in our conditional grants, and in fact, in the um, and in fact, this time around, we've actually had additional cuts to our conditional grant framework, and our goods and services expenditure has gone through the roof um, as a result of the inflating increases. So the prices have gone through the roof, and so what we've tried to do here is to mitigate and shift internally as well as receiving money externally, so that we can continue to pay our 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 um our personnel and we can continue to pay our suppliers for the goods and services um that's what we've had to do we've had to make hard decisions around prioritization and reprioritization to keep the ship afloat um and so that's the details are then in the pages 102 through to 107 as to exactly where those those bits and pieces of money have gone to and 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 what to and and what to fund, um, I leave the specific scarce skills question around the infrastructure specialists. I'll ask Dr. Angeletti Dutoy to answer that, and if there's any anything uh, that she wants to add around the uh, Kipfontein Regional Hospital, um, I, I would ask her to add at this point. Thank you very much, Chair, and uh, I. Don't think I greeted everybody. So good morning to you. Good morning to the minister, and good morning to the members. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. K. Good morning, Dr. Angeletti Dutoy. Uh, please good morning, proceed. Good morning, members. Good morning, chair. Good morning, all. I uh, the scale skill as Dr. Kluti uh, mentioned. Uh, we have been trying. Uh, there are specific scale skills in the built environment that uh, we have to uh, advertise uh, twice or three times before getting people on board. Uh, one of them was this year the construction uh, uh, project manager. Uh, that is uh, is a specialized kind of uh, set. So we had to advertise twice for that. And also electrical engineer are particularly scarce among all the engineers and civil engineers. So this, the post, the reason why we had to, uh, we had saving on that uh, is because we, despite us uh, trying to um, try to find the post, uh, we have to we have to advertise uh, advertise more than once. Uh, I must just remember these posts are uh, uh, funded from the grant from the grant from the infrastructure grant the HFRG. Uh, according to the National Treasury capacitation uh, instruction. So uh, one sense we are uh, protected uh, because we, we still have funding from the grant, uh, but uh, again, we have a difficulty in uh, recruitment. When you look at the uh, Clifton Hospital uh, in the in the detail uh, report where we have all the project, it's clear stated there that we are on stage two 
uh, that is a concert design. We have paid uh, so far, I think, uh, something like 7 million rand in uh, design uh, fees. And we have a projection for this financial year, at the end of financial year, in 9 million. The project is progressing uh, reasonably well. We are working with the city of Cape Town, with the Department of Environmental Affairs to deal with all the issues related to accessibility to the facility, uh, public transport capacity, access to the different communities that are referring to the hospital and so forth. So the project is progressing well. And uh, yeah, so that is where we are with the GFU step. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Angeletti de Tue. Uh, I see member member Baku Baku Forces hand. Uh, are there any other hands? I see member Van Are there any more questions uh, for the second round members? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Am I audible? You are audible, member Baku Baku Force. You may you may proceed. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Good morning to everyone. I have a question on page 108. I want to know what is the latest in respect of the recruiting staff to work at Bracken Gate and how many of the workers who worked there during COVID got, got the jobs and how many were retrenched? Thank you very much, Chairperson. That's the only question that I want to ask. Thank you, Member Baku Baku Fos, Member Wendvogel. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, Chair, um, I think um, the HOD explained the increase part, but the fact remains it was money that we didn't have. How, how they use it uh, and, and, and uh, the current pressure and challenges, um, I do understand, but the fact remains it was money that we didn't have and you, on the point of reference, it was put as an increase. So for me, it is an increase. Then, Chair, my last question is on the uh, prevention unit, uh, page 107, um, sub-program uh, uh, 2.1. What progress has been made to establish uh, the pre violence prevention prevention unit, and and which stars are still outstanding, and and were these uh, reduced funds for the unit, uh, and why are they un earmarked? Does this mean they are no longer needed by the unit? And and and, and if so, what are the reasons for that? Uh, thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Member Bertfogel. I recognize member class also, but we first going to have member Bunce. Um, thank you, Chair. Chair, after member Von Fuchel, I feel very much covered because I wanted to follow up on the increase part and also seeking clarity. But I think she has covered me with the question that she's asking. I think the department must also take us uh, in the spirit of keeping them accountable when we are asking for updates. It's not to have them seen as if we are accusing them of taking or doing things. We know that there's a GF Twister uh, that is somewhere there that has a plan to, to be finalized at a specific, specific date. When we come to a meeting like this one, Che, we must keep them unfortunately accountable. We must ask these questions because at the end of the day, we are also living in these communities. The questions comes to us, we must be better equipped to answer. Uh, the questions of why people are sleeping on the floors, uh, uh, why are the queues long, why are they long in, 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 at the clinics waiting. So it's not a matter of, 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 of trying to be nasty. We also want to understand so that we are better equipped. I'm not going to extend my question. I, I, I would rather cancel them after uh, Member Van Vogel has spoken. Thank you, Chair. I thought uh, it's better just to comment on this one. Thank you, Member Bounce. Uh, Member Klaas, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, uh, Chairperson, and good morning, everyone. I apologize for being late. It was just a traffic because I wanted to be in the office because I want also to do something, so I apologize. The, my question is that to the health, did 
the government explain to you why they don't have money? Did you give you the reason that you can table to ask that why there is no money? Because I hear you uh, always saying that the government didn't give us the money. So we need that question to be answered. Why? Because some of other money has been brought back to the fiscal, close to 1.4 million. And there's places that they didn't uh, give any money. So the, the other thing, the second part of the question is that, which amount of money that you have been asked to them, that they say to you that they don't have. What have you cut after they tell you that there's no money? Because they, they must say to you, no, we cannot give you for this one and this one and this one because there's no money. We need that explanation because we, 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 we don't know exactly why they say there's no money. Because there are money from other committees that has been put in the fiscal. That's a question. So what I want to know that from your side, which money turn them back? For what application they have you done for that money? The last one I can ask is that we still having a, 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 a bad luck of a lot of complaints to hospitals. Who are, uh, 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 we, we did talk and, and we listen that red, blue and what, but it's still occurring. We, we did request you that uh, why there will be no, no place only for red and only for blue or only for another color, and then we will see how much, a, 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 because the, the cases depend on that colors, but they still a backlog. How would you resolve that thing? Thank you. Are you done with the class? Yes, I'm, I'm done, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Member Class. Member Ventforth, your hand is up. Is that a follow up? Member Ventforth? Uh, Member Ventforth? Yes, Chair. Your hand is still up. Is that, do you have a follow up? No, it's a, a legacy and chest. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Minister, over to you, if you wish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's perhaps to, to, to explain to member class first, um, uh, Dr. Clute will do the specifics. Um, the, it's the, the National Treasury um, uh, allocates monies to the sectors. So we, in the health sector gets, I'm not sure it's 2.5 to 256 something billion that gets from the National Treasury. And, and then it includes the um, conditional grants. Also, it provides money equitably share to the provinces on the basis because it's the national government that collects taxes uh, from the people so that they could be able to divide it to the provinces accordingly. So at the beginning of the year, our equitable share, which is the money that come from National Treasury, was decreased. Secondly, our conditional grants that come from the Department of Health, they were decreased, which all amounted to about 1.5 billion. Also at the beginning of the year, the issue of the salary increase for the public service, we have got the biggest, including the education public service. There was no money noting how it works, probably, of course, you know that it is there at the national level uh, that they negotiate with the organized labor, and then it goes to the network and all of those. 
in regard to what will be the percentage of the increase. As you might be aware that there was a long which went into court during the time of the finance minister, Tito Mboweni, when he indicated that the agreement uh, that came up through the Department of Public Service Administration of the increases, the country cannot be able to afford as such. Therefore, um, they want now to 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 um, not necessarily to follow that. So he went to court. You may recall there was a time that uh, there was there were strikes uh, throughout the country. Uh, for us, the majority in the in the organized labor in the health sector is in the how, uh, which uh, also we saw what happened at the time. Uh, the 10% increase versus the 7% increase. To cut the story short, then eventually the national and then labor agreed on the 7%. I can't remember whether it's 7 point whatever, I can't recall, but agreed on that percentage that that will be the increase. And then automatically the provinces have to find money. If you recall when we did the appropriation, when we said we are taking uh, the man to cushion it for this year because still there were um, uh, discussions and the, the issue was in court. It took about 300 and something million to cushion because we have to pay um, the salary increase, hoping that the national will be able to give us the money back that we are uh, increasing the salaries of our staff. Unfortunately, up till now that we are appropriating, it's only now that they are saying, we're only going to give you 78% of the total salary increase. Remember, throughout we have been paying the monies. Everyone has had the increase, including myself, uh, although it's a part, a part of the parliament because we're all public service. So they've been that where we find that we have been paying. So the 700 and something million that they are giving us, we have already given the money the salary increase to the staff. So that's why I'm trying to explain the other question from member parts, member Ben Fokal about whatever the increase. So we have already given the salaries and which at the national level, they've agreed, T DP DPSA, um, Department of Public Service, uh, mean and everyone who are part of the bargaining council, there's been agreement, but there was never money that followed uh, to the, um, to the uh, provincial governments, public servants are also the national, but it's mostly at the provinces where they have to appoint, specifically for education, the teachers, and also the health professionals. National, they don't own hospitals. National, they don't own health workers who are working or rendering services, except like in the labs and so forth, it's the provinces. So the money is the money that we have been paying and we have to pay as an increase in the salary that they're supposed to follow, uh, give it to the province. So it's not only us going to be affected. So that's why I was saying it's not an increase. It's about we are disappointed that they don't give us the whole 100%. It means now now we have to fill in the other uh, um, 20, uh, 20 something percentage, because they're giving 78. And in addition to that, it means that when you have to appoint a person, you have to appoint the person in the new salary scale, of which is, that's why we're saying that it will be difficult to fill up the position, but there is no money. So there's no money. The 103 million increase um, that is coming for the provincial treasury, it's also about a, a, a um, what you call a pacifier, because the, the needs as I indicated earlier, we started with the 1.5 billion short. The needs that we have now, 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 it goes over 250 something million. So they said, Arame Foito, the only money we have is that 103 million. And then lastly, from our own revenue, uh, we still collect money uh, from, our, from the patient fees and so forth. Uh, we, we were able also to make use of it in order to cushion the services. So currently, we don't have much money in terms of the cushion service pressure. We don't have money to, to alleviate uh, and all those pressures um, that are there, or even to add other posts that some of them have been there, or they, are, they should be there based on the approved uh, post list. We don't have that money. So that is the kind of a situation where things are. Now, in regard to the infrastructure, there are many, we've got the, it's in the, is it in the APP or in the, in the whatever annual book? 
uh, at the back where you can see the annexures about all of these infrastructure things. So there are many of those in different phases. So, but we said, as even with a commitment made by the premier at the state of the um, provincial address, that at least the Tigerberg hospital, the current one, in terms of ensuring that it does remain a level three, because at the, at, currently it's uh, like a high school that offers higher primary school and junior primary school and the crash, which is not supposed to be because it is a central hospital. Therefore, it has to go ahead. We already pushing it for the next 10 years in terms of the Tiger Beck hospital things. Right? But you'll have to uh, uh, decongest and also um, uh, unbundle that. So where will you be able to take the higher primary school level, something like that? Hence the, um, the Bella, the other Tiger Beck regional hospital is, is a must because we have to do it both. Because it will be said that if they see that you are demolishing the other part because the conditions and then you don't do that and then for the other. So those two are there. The third one, which is the Juste, which is the Clef and the, the Clefontaine Regional Hospital, is one of those that we have been committed to. And then luckily uh, we've been provided for the prof professional fees, fees uh, from the national treasure. That's it. So that's where things are right now, but the commitment is still there because it has to happen as we have got more uh, population that is increasing, and also are uh, the province that trains students across, and also even specialists. You have to have all of those. But where the money will be, we'll double cross the bridge when we reach it. Thank you. Over to Dr. Klute. Thank you, Minister. Dr. Klute. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, I will go slowly with the comments uh, from the questions from the colleague, from the um, members. So, Member Baku, Baku, Baku Foss, uh, we did answer the question of what happened to the staff of Brackengate at our engagement around the annual report with the Standing Committee, and we gave quite a lot of detail. But just to summarize what we provided at that meeting, we said the following. Everybody that was at Brackengate their contracts came to an end. We then advertised post in relation to what we require at Brackengate. Everybody was encouraged to apply. Everybody was interviewed. And the majority of the people that had a contract at Brackengate was, after successful interviews, absorbed into the post at Brackengate. There was additional people were encouraged to apply for additional posts in the department if they weren't successful in Brackengate. And at the time of reporting back to the committee at that time, there were only 34 people that have not been accommodated anywhere in the department in a post. And they were continuously encouraged to apply for additional posts wherever they come up in the department. In relation to what Member Van Vogel and Member Barnes is saying about the increase versus the shortfall, the Minister has explained that the allocation that's allocated to us in, in, in broad measure is an allocation to make up the shortfall of the allocation at the beginning of the year. So this adjustment estimate is money to make up the shortfall for a very difficult thing that we've been asked to do as a health sector, is to commit expenditure against a policy decision or policy decisions for which an allocation was not made. So we were asked to pay the increase in salaries for public servants for money that was not in our system. So when we say we started with a projected 1.5 billion shortfall, a billion of that was for the fact that we were asked to implement a policy decision for which no budget allocation has been made. The subtotal of what has been allocated now is less than the billion that we had to spend. So that's my comments, that although it is additional money voted onto the budget, 
It's money voted onto the budget to compensate partially for a policy decision that was implemented that was not budgeted for. That's the facts in relation to this um, adjustment estimate. In relation to the VPU question, um, the VPU question is the majority of the posts have been filled and is in the progress of being filled. There is no intention not to completely fill the VPU to the capacity for which it has been earmarked. The unearmarking of a proportion of the VPU budget is in relation to the projected expenditure that the VPU will incur between now and the end of March. And therefore, that money has been freed up to deal with the service pressures generally in the department. But the full capacitation of the VPU is not compromised in terms of that specific issue. In terms of member bonds asking us about Gia Buster, we fully understand member bonds that the accountability is an important point, and it is our job to engage you in relation to the complexities around the matters. So we are, as ministers explained, proceeding with um, the replacement, which is Cliffontaine Regional Hospital, and we're also proceeding with the Belhar Regional Hospital. We have actually, in fact, asked and have now been making that decision, policy decision, not to stop the infrastructure development for Clipfontaine and for Belhar um, in light of the budget pressures. So it is our commitment. It's a commitment of Western Cape government. And we are working with our counterparts at the National Department of Health, National Treasury, to not stop funding for these infrastructure projects. Member Klaus, you're probably asking the most important question, and that is a very important question the way you framed it. So let let us tell you what we've asked for. So we asked for a budget that would have been the 28 that we got plus the 1.5. So we asked for 29.5 billion. That's what we asked for. We were told you are going to get 28 billion, 1.5 billion short. The question you then asking is, so what is the amount that we didn't get? We didn't get the 1.5 because that's what we asked for. We got now 900,000 back. So what does the 600,000 or 500,000 not buy us? And what have we discontinued? Because we, in the final analysis, are 600 short of what we asked when we went into the financial year. So that's very important. And we need to explain to you what is the opportunity cost and the real cost to the system for us not getting that 600,000. And, and, and I really like that question because we're going to have to come back to the standing committee when we talk about the allocation for next year and the next three years. And we will very clearly articulate to you. This is what we asked for. This is what we got. Of what we didn't get, what is the implication and what decisions are we making with that? And I appreciate the question. When the minister answers, so when we when they when we were then asked, they say, okay, we're asking for that. So why cannot why can we not get the 29.5 billion to start the year off? We were told many things, uh, member class, but the majority of it is that the financial reality of the country does not allow for that amount of money to be given to the health sector. And it's a, a range of reasons, but ultimately. Somewhere a decision is made nationally and has to be then made provincially to say that if you weigh up all what you need to do and what you fund and what you have, you then relatively deprioritize the needs of the healthcare system. So those are the facts, um, Member Klaus, and you are right. We need to be explicit about that. We need to be mature about it. We need to have conversations with everybody about it. Everybody understands that that is what we're actually articulating when we speak about these matters. When it comes to the complaints of the hospitals, we fully acknowledge and we appreciate what you're saying because the, what we just explained to you, because we did not get what we asked for to be able to manage sufficiently with the staff, with the services, to try and avert complaints and improve the care, we didn't get it. Therefore, the complaints are still there. Potentially, it will start increasing 
because you're right. That triad system, red, orange, yellow, green, means that if there are more red cases, uh, do we have the capacity to save the lives of the people that is critically ill? If there's more orange cases, do we have the capacity to deal with them effectively? If there's more yellow and green cases, there is, the answer actually is yellow and green should not be in the hospital. But what do you tell a person that has arrived at the hospital? Because they feel ill, they're assessed by us, they're not critically ill, their life is not in danger, where do they go? Those are the difficult questions, member class, and we agree with you. We need to have honest, frank conversations and take the communities into our trust to work out ways of dealing with this. And that's why we're working with all sectors. That's why we want the Violence Prevention Unit. That's why we want to work with education, DSD, with civil society, because only if we start decreasing the pressure on the health system will we have a better experience. So that's why we need to focus and turn our attention very quickly to what can prevent somebody from becoming ill rather than waiting for people to become ill and then overcrowding the hospital and then the resulting in the complaints when everybody's needs can't, cannot be met by the capacity at the facility. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Dr. Kluter. Members, are there more questions? It doesn't seem like it in that case, uh, Minister. Not any, from my stand. Thank you, Member. Uh, in that case, uh, Members, uh, Minister, if you have any closing remarks you wish to make. None, Chair. <laughs> Minister, if you with yes. us, if you can hear us. Yes, sorry, sorry, Chair. Um, yes, indeed, none. We'll see the committee. I mean, we'll see the, uh, yeah, we'll see the members of the committee at the sitting, I think, on the 8th, if I'm correctly. Uh, thank you very much for the input. Uh, thank you, Dr. Clute and your team. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Minister. Uh, Dr. Clute, any concluding remarks from your side? Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and just to all the members, um, thank you very much for the manner in which uh, we are held accountable. I've previously stated it, I'm extremely proud of the team of people that's on the call. We take being held accountable very seriously. And really thank you for the maturity of the conversation, the maturity of the questions. We really appreciate being able to engage with the members of the committee at, the, at this level of understanding of the situation. We are about to go into a very difficult situation. We have been in a difficult situation for a while and mm -hmm. candid, open, frank conversations um, about honestly answering the questions and asking the right questions is crucial for us. So as Minister Mbombo said, I really thank her for her leadership during this time and this wonderful team of people on the call that really does us proud. And Chairperson, you made the point. We go humbly into the space of the national space. We, we're not fighting against other provinces or the national department. We're part of South Africa. We go into that space. We work proudly side by side with our colleagues and the colleagues in other provinces that are probably in a worse position than we find ourselves in. And our empathy and compassion goes out with them. That's why we're working close by, closely with all other colleagues and other provinces. And then really from that perspective, I must say to you, I'm very proud to lead a team of people here that is in service, not only of the people of the Western Cape, but in service of the people of this country. Everybody is very proud of South African, and we really want to see the health system in this country succeed. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Dr. Klute. Uh Members, uh, this is obviously the last meeting, I think, of this committee. And therefore, I would also like to take the opportunity to extend my gratitude and, and respect uh, for what this uh, this team, the team of the minister and the team of the department, the HLD and his team have uh, accomplished in, uh, in this year. Uh, it's a monumental task. You have certainly, as far as I'm concerned, handled it with a plum and, uh, and the dignity that it uh, deserves. So with those few words, once again, thank you very, very much. 
Um, and although I've been nice to you now, I'm going to ask you to leave. So you're welcome to excuse yourselves uh, so that we can continue finalizing our committee report. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Doctor. And thank you to all the officials. Maybe as the minister in waiting, Member Van Vogel would also like to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Yeah. Members, let me just see. I think all the officials have uh, left us. Uh, members, uh, are they? I think uh, Member Bunce was asking some questions. I, I don't know. I, I presume those questions were answered. So uh, before we proceed, uh, can we just get an indication? Are there uh, any resolutions or requests for information or recommendations from the adjustments appropriation budget uh, that was presented that uh, members would like to get? If I can get an indication by show of hands. Member Van Vogel? Yeah, Chair, um, perhaps I missed that, but because I'm also on the road. Um, I'm not sure was my answer, my question um, answer in terms of the uh, 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 violence prevention unit. The members can assist. Um, no, uh, you you are right. I, you, you are, that was that was not addressed. Uh, uh, Member went for my apologies for that. I should have picked that up. Uh, that was not addressed. Uh, so, Ms. Jamche, if we can have that as a resolution to get that information uh, to the committee. Uh, uh, as soon as possible, please. Is that in order, Member Van Vogel? Yes, yes, Chair. Thank you. Any others, members? Any other questions or resolutions? Chair, mine was partly answered on the delayed projects, but I also asked for a list of total delayed projects. I only uh, was asking about GF. I got an answer on GF Trooster. As, the, as one, but they said there are a number of other delayed projects. Perhaps if we can get a list of that. Thank you. And the reasons Thank you. why. Thank you, Member Bans. Uh, Ms. Jamshe, the question is, uh, uh, what is the total number of delayed projects and, uh, and why? If we could get a list of that from the department. Members, are there any other questions or resolutions? In that case, uh, sorry, uh, Chair. Uh, the 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 first resolution, the VPS. What is the resolution there? That's that's the it's the Violence Protection Unit. Yes. Uh, um, and yeah. and uh, is that correct, what Mr. What progress Mr. has been made? Yes. What progress has been made to establish uh, the VPU? and which stars are still outstanding and in with these reduced funds for the unit and what and why are they unearmarked does it mean they are no longer needed by the unit so that was my question and if so what are the reasons for that no thank you member thank, thank you, you member yeah. uh, members with that thing we will now proceed to the adoption and consideration of the committee report on vote six, health and wellness in the schedule to the Western Cape Adjustments Appropriation Bill, Bill 7, 2023. And I table it as follows. And this is now the committee report, as you see uh, on the screen. The, the Standing Committee on Health and Wellness, having deliberated on the subject of vote six, health and wellness, in the schedule to the Western Cape Adjustments Appropriation Bill B7 2023, refer to it in accordance with Standing Rule 188, reports that the committee supports or does not support the vote. vote. Uh, members, can I get an indication uh, as to whether the vote is supported or not? Member Windvogel? Member Fry? Chair, I move that we support the bill. Thank you, Member Fry. Uh, is there uh, any uh, other views? We don't need a seconder for yes. this. Uh, Member Van yes. 
Yes, Chair, as the Minister in Waiting, Chair, um, uh, the ANC wishes to know the increase in the adjustment budget, but wants to make use of the, um, the minority view uh, in line with the Rule 19. Thank you, Thank Chair. You. Thank you very much. Uh, so noted, uh, Member Vint. Do not support. Do not support the bill, Chair. <laughs> the, 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 the. It is. It is so noted. Thank you. I will then read again the committee report. Report of the Standing Committee on Health and Wellness on Vote Six: Health and Wellness in the Schedule to the Western Cape Adjustment Appropriation Bill, B7, 2023, dated 30 November. 2023 as follows, the Standing Committee on Health and Wellness having deliberated on the subject of those six health and wellness in the schedule to the Western Cape Adjustment Appropriation Bill, referred to it in accordance with Standing Rule 118 reports that the committee supports the vote. Uh, then there's a minority view in terms of Standing Rule 90, the African National Congress. And I'm not sure here, Member Class, what is your position? Uh, I support the bill. Thank you. In terms of Standing Rule 90, the African National Congress expressed the minority view to not support the vote. Uh, the committee therefore supports the vote with the minority view of the ANC. Thank you very much, members. Uh, I see a hand, Member Fry. Chair, in the, in the interest of correct process and procedure, I move that we adopt the report. Thank you so much, uh, Member Fry. Much appreciated. Member Van Fuffel, is it a legacy hand? Your hand is still up. Legacy hand, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Members, uh, thank you for your attendance of this meeting. As I said, I think it's the last meeting. Ms. Jumpsy, do we have, an, have, have to have another meeting uh, before, uh, after this? Or can we Mr. proceed? We can proceed, Chair. Do we, to adopt do we have the to adopt the committee report for the on the annual report of the department and to adopt the minutes? Yes, uh, um, Ms. Jump Chair. My question is: Do we have to constitute a new meeting, or can we just proceed? You can proceed, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, we will then proceed. Uh, with the committee report um, of the Standing Committee on Health and Wellness on the annual report of the Department of Health and Wellness for the 2022-2023 financial year. Uh, Ms. You will, it will go through a page by page uh, on the screen. That's page two. Any comments? You can scroll on, Ms. Jokche. On the screen, Chair. I beg your pardon, Member. I'm saying, my Chairperson, I don't see anything on the screen. We can see it on our screens. Uh, the documents were circulated to you. Uh, Ms. Jamche, is there anything that you can do to assist Member Bakufos? Or Mr. Hassan? I don't know, Chair, what could be the problem on her screen. Ms. Ms. Baku Baku, uh, sorry, Member Baku Baku Fos, uh, do you have any visibility yet? No, Chair, but you may proceed if my fellow member, Van Fokker, can see. Thank you very much. I trust, and member member Van Vogel, I, I trust that members Van Vogel and Bob Bones can see. You have in front of you page three. Thank you for that, member Barker Barker Force. Page three. You can proceed, Ms. Jump Chair. Page four. Page five. And there you have it. Members, can we have a proposal? Member Fry? Chair, I move that we adopt that report, Chair. Thank you, Member Fry. Appreciation. Ms. Jump, Chair. Anything else? 
We have the, the minutes, minutes of that meeting, Chair. Thank you. Yes, they are the on the screen. The minutes of the meeting. I think there must be a seconder, Chair. Uh, when, Ms. when there's a proposal, there's supposed to be a second. Uh, I, th I think we have made the same mistake with the adoption earlier. No, um, uh, Member Van Vogel, uh, there's a rule actually. Uh, allow me to quickly get get that. I think it's in the interest of all of us that uh, that it actually be circulated as widely as possible. Um, and I'm 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 going to quote. Uh, and I've actually received this uh, from uh, from uh, Member Fry, um, and this was this was compiled by Mr. Jan Vermeulen, a senior procedural officer, and and it reads as follows. And this was addressed to Member Fry. I thought that it would be proper for me to send you this mail relating to the issue of seconders. In the premier meeting of 22 November 2023, I mentioned that no motion needs a seconder to be considered by a committee, but I did not quote the rule number. The rule number in the standing rule is 69. The rule is in chapter seven, order in meetings and rules of debate. And then under the heading seconder, no motion or amendment requires a seconder. A, a seconder. Um, and it's it's based on that, uh, that, that, we, we, that we don't take, but I suppose on the minutes we will have to, I will just do it for the sake of procedure and, and clarity. Can I have a seconder for the, for the uh, adoption of the annual report as proposed by Member Fry? Chair, I second. Thank you, Member Plato. And can we, now we have in front of us the minutes of the proceedings of that meeting of the annual report, um, page one. Page two. Page three, page four. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Jiangche. Uh, can we have a proposer? I propose, Chair. Thank you, Member Plato. A second, seconder. I second, Chair. Thank you, Member Vintvogel. Ms. Jiangche. Chair. Are we done? Uh, yes, Chair, we are done for the day, but I think the committee will have to meet at some point before we uh, we go on recess, before Parliament goes on recess, to just adopt the minutes of the public hearings and the, the minutes of the mandate so that the NHI file can be archived. That file needs to be closed and be filed. So, yeah, the minute the meeting can be a 30 minutes meeting online. Once I'm done with the minutes, I will email the minutes to all the members and the date Thank will be communicated. Thank you so much. Uh, I take note of that. So after all, this is not our last meeting members. Before we get say goodbye to each other, so we will have another meeting sometime uh, during next week when we will find a space just to address the matters that Ms. Jamche has referred to. And there we go. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your attention. Keep Thank well. you very have a nice much. Weekend. Thank, Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Bye to everyone.